1965, when the Gear region was made into a sanctuary for wild animals, the ecosystem was already depleted. 21,000 livestock animals grazed on the dry fields, and this number tripled during the monsoon. 90% of the grass was consumed by domestic animals, which made life difficult for the wild herbivores, which were also infected with diseases carried by the livestock. But with the work of the Lion of Gear project, the situation has improved. Now the ecosystem has regenerated itself and the population of herbivores has become healthier. The Nilgais, the biggest antelopes in Asia, are numerous in all of the region. Locally they are known as blue cows, a name which has saved them from the greed of the hunters in a country where the cow is a sacred animal. Among the herbivores of Gia, there are also sambars, shitals, and chikara gazelles, antelopes with four horns, and a small population of black antelopes. Before India became independent, the black antelope was the most common wild animal in the country. But in spite of being a sacred animal for the Vishnua and the Valas, and in spite of being Krishna's favorite antelope and a national emblem of India, its population has fallen from over 4 million down to about 25,000 in all of the country. The balance between predators and prey keeps the forest of gear in a permanent state of renewal. The vegetation and different species of animals vary considerably according to the topology of the park, giving rise to two distinct areas. The soil in the valley is deeper and more clay than that of the hills, which allows for leafier vegetation. This is the part where the rivers flow and where the deciduous teak forest appears, an oasis in this semi-arid region of Gujarat. The watercourses in the forest are lands of plenty for the animals. There are more species than on the eastern hills where the vegetation is scarcer and less developed. During the dry season, the valley becomes the water reserve for the whole park and allows the life of all the biological community to continue. The eastern hills are more open and treeless. There are forests of acacias and large pastures of succulent grass, which, without being as impressive as the teak forest, still provide food for the herbivores and give shelter to a wide variety of steppe fauna. In such an exposed habitat as the grassland, camouflaging is essential. The pin-tailed sand grouse know this, and their chicks, staying still during their parents' absence, turn into tiny pebbles on the stony ground, thereby confusing their predators. Camouflaging is less important for carnivores. They have hardly any natural enemies inside the park and their sharpened senses allow them to obtain food even though it is as well hidden as a cicada in the grass. The Gear Visitors Center has been set up in a fenced-off area of 412 hectares inside the sanctuary in the Devalia area. This includes an example of all the different habitats to be found in the park, as well as its most characteristic animals. It is a synthesis of the Forest of Gear, which reduces the burden on the park of tourism and enables those visitors who cannot spend more than one or two days at the reserve 
to see the most interesting animals. The number of lions in Gier has outgrown the capacity of the park and the struggle for territory has intensified. Four or five satellite populations have moved to the outlying areas of Gier and the new males that reach adulthood are drawn to the 412 hectare area of the visitor center where only one male lives. As a consequence, there are frequent clashes at the protective fence. The park rangers are obliged to watch these encounters closely because on some occasions several males have teamed up on the outside to try to take control of the fenced off area and their attacks have knocked the fence down. While the metal wire remains in place, the lions will not be harmed and will desist in their struggles after exhausting themselves with several hours of growling and banging.